I try to get, I mean. Uh oh. Good morning. I will now call the April 5th, uh, 2023 San Diego County Board of Supervisors Land Use Meeting, Housing Authority Meeting, and Sanitation District Meeting order. As a reminder, according to the board rules and procedures, audience members shall not whistle, clap, stomp feet, or anything that disrupts the proceedings. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Thank you, Chairwoman Vargas. Supervisor Anderson. Present. Supervisor Desmond. Here. Chairwoman Vargas. Here. All right, uh, so for the Housing Authority, this legislative body requires a quorum of four commissioners. Since we do not have four commissioners present, we will be continuing the item on the Housing Authority agenda to a special meeting on April 11, 2023. With that, um, item C to D, statement closing session report. County Council, were there any reportable actions taken from yesterday's closed session? No reportable actions from yesterday's closed session. We will now proceed with the not, thank you. We will now proceed with non-agenda public communications. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on subject matters within the board's jurisdiction, but not an item on today's agenda. The only action that the board may take is a referral to the chief administrative officer. Reminder, according to rule 4A, members of the public that are non-English speaking and need interpretation assistance will get twice the allotted time for their comments, which is four minutes. To better facilitate the meetings, we will have five speakers in person, five speakers via phone, and the rest of non-agenda public communication will be heard at the close of today's meeting. Clerk, can you call the uh, speakers for the public? Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Vargas. We have 24 total requests to speak on matters not listed on the agenda, seven in person, and 17 re requesting to speak by phone. For those that have requested to speak by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. You will then have two minutes to address the board, and I'd like to invite forward the following individuals. Bryant Roomba, Michael Brando, Robert German, Mark, and Oliver Twist. All right, Bryant Roomba. Good morning, everybody. So uh, continuing from yesterday, Jim, you know, I, I, I had that conversation with the gentleman from uh, that was the lobbyist for the Armenian. It was it was really interesting. It did get kind of cut short a little bit, but I kind of would I, I'd actually like to continue that conversation with that gentleman. Um, I know he definitely comes in here a lot. I noticed, uh, you know, him and Joel had shaken hands and even the uh, the, the two the two and 10 minute warning guy from our meeting even you know, met him in the, uh, the aisle and, and decided to, to talk to him. You know, when he told me that the citizenry is to blame for being not engaged, I, I did want to just pretty much reiterate that good government does demand the intelligent interest of all of its citizens. And that does, like I said yesterday, fly in the face. When I talked to him about the system being broken, you know, broken is pretty much is it fixable? Everything in this world is fixable. I think that we all need to kind of understand that. But I wanted to really just touch on a couple things. Uh, you know, when we have an unengaged citizenry, you know, really it opens the doors for, let's just say, artistic control by uh, certain groups, that type of things. I'd like to see that stop. Uh, voting confidence, uh, voting, a large percentage of the population actually has given up even voting anymore. Many of them for their entire lives have not voted because of they didn't want jury duty. They, they, they really are unfamiliar with how uh, really our republic system and the responsibility that comes with citizenry is, is mm, uh, a responsive government. You know, I've asked you three times about Alejandro uh, Sanchez. You know, you would want to have as a, as a decision maker, you'd want to have a pulse for our, uh, the decisions that you make. Uh, Agenda item seven days, that's pretty much a full-time job for people. Public school exodus, campaign finances are a barrier to entry for people. Inflation means broken homes. Uh, constitutional knowledge, what makes America great is done. Thank you. Nice slide. Oh, you're going to do it? Okay, great. Last time we didn't. Okay, great. Robert Gurman. 
It's not going well at Gillespie Field Airport in El Cajon. High turnover rate in critical airport personnel, nobody in the office at the airport, preferential treatment of FBO lease agreements by the prior administration, which were openly criticized by other clients at Gillespie, over 600 noise complaints in two months, million dollar hangar homes flooding this year because Gillespie is built in a floodplain at the lowest point in El Cajon Valley. It didn't help that somebody forgot to turn on the sump pumps at one of the wettest wettest winters on record. No master airport plan, only an airport layout plan dated 2004 to follow. All of these were discussed at Gillespie Field Development Council meeting last month. Remember, Gillespie has the highest fatalities in the nation, highest on airport incursions in the western states. General Atomic is one of San Diego's premier companies. Amazon has a large warehouse office building next door uh, to General Atomic in Poway. General Atomic sells and ships their drones worldwide. Amazon is one of the largest logistic companies in the U.S. GA's jets are based at Gillespie Field Airport. MCAS is 10 minutes closer than Gillespie Field Airport. Both of these large companies deserve a world airport at MCAS for their world businesses, not a podunk hobby airport trying to survive. That podunk, toxic, short runway airport is Gillespie Field. Any questions? Because I got 20 seconds left, so I'm going to use them all. Are we good? Well, I'm going to wait till my slideshow's over. Is that okay? Okay, thanks. That's landing on a regular basis now at Gillespie Field. Never before in the history. There's one more. And that's a picture from my balcony of a large aircraft landing at Miramar. That's how close apart they are. Thank you. Good morning, Oliver Twist here. For the past three years, many of us from the public have brought forth valid criticisms of Nathan Fletcher, which all fell on deaf ears. From his mocking condescension of telecommenters at the July 2022 meeting, to his blatantly denying and even lying about ever having done anything in the way of imposing vaccines on anyone, when in fact he put forth a vaccine mandate for new hires at meetings in October and November of 2021, or when he paternally paternalistically ch uh, chastised Chaldean businessmen a few months ago when they voiced valid concerns about increased fees for tobacco vendors, there were many, many times Fletcher openly abused the public and now has egregiously violated public trust. Whether you knew of behavioral concerns or merely suspected them, too many in this chamber, in social and professional circles, and in the media remained silent and looked the other way as a matter of political convenience. So everyone in that den of deniers is complicit in this episode. I again call on you to implement a citizen review board of supervisors oversight, as well as to initiate an open data portal and proactively provide all of Fletcher's emails, phone records, and calendar. You must also provide an itemized billing for the almost $2 million in taxpayer money spent on his private security, and that expense needs to end now. This is a start of community healing and reparations. Lastly, if there is a sliver of thought, one iota in allowing him coming back to this chamber on May 2nd to tip the scales on any vote, that ember of thought needs to be extinguished right now. To do so otherwise is to sanction his actions. Thank you. Mark. Uh, KUSI article, quote, road usage charge. Uh, <clears throat> Nora Vargas uh, is trying to deceive people by saying that uh, the unpopular vehicle mileage tax, uh, she is using the term road usage charge. Here's a quote from KUSI article. <clears throat> Sandag's own document proves Vargas is lying. Under the regional road usage charge section, the document states implementation actions, which is to pursue legislation or another mechanism to administer a regional road usage charge. This is against the people's will. It's against her oath of office. 
And uh, the people definitely don't want this, and she's trying to sneak it in under a different term that won't require voters to vote on it. Furthermore, um, a new report claims the Blackstone Group, oh, by the way, everyone should see these videos. I don't have time to give you lots of information. They've made sure of that. Um, <clears throat> new rep they're all on YouTube. One is on BitChute. New report claims Blackstone Group is buying San Diego's affordable housing, hiking up rent prices. Story by Chandel Men Menezes. Uh, Blackstone is roughly <clears throat> is buying roughly 58,000 apartment units from Comrade Pravi's uh, foundation for about 1 billion. That is about 17,200 per apartment and under 20,000 each after their $100 million renovations. Add to that that Chula Vista has passed Ordinance 3527. Chula Vista landlords must now provide tenants with relocation payments of two months' rent and three months if the renter is a senior citizen or disabled. This is a trick to turn um, renters and landlords against each other instead of them getting rid of inflation, stopping the Federal Reserve, and having corpor corporations pay a real livable wage. People need to see these videos. <laughs> Michael. County Board Chair Nathan Fletcher says it is time to fight back against misinformation. He says is keeping people from getting the COVID vaccine. I care about your life and I care about your family. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated and there's a pandemic of misinformation. I care about your life and I care about your family. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated and there's a pandemic of misinformation. They want you to be on their side against yourself. Narcissists try to turn people against themselves. It's bad enough that in relationships with narcissists, they turn against you and turn you against them eventually with their terrible behavior. What's even worse is that in so many situations, they also try to turn you against yourself. For narcissistic people, there's no team or partnership. There's their side and there's the other people's side. This includes you. Now they want you to be on their side. Except that in this situation, if you're on the narcissist team, by default, you cannot be on yours because you're actually one of the opposing teams. They want you to be on their side against yourself. This is where it gets toxic and abusive. You are expected to be on their side no matter what, even if this puts you at direct odds with your own safety and well-being. You are expected to betray yourself without even thinking about it. And if you don't, you're selfish and you don't care about them. You're a bad person who thinks only you matter. House of Gonzalez Fletcher, we know you're watching. Get out. Don't wait 30 days. Mr. I have a closet. No one would see us there. Fletcher, get out now. The people do not want you. All of you are aware of this abuse. Now we will hear from those that, are, that have requested to speak by phone. Again, we'll be hearing from the first five callers. The remaining callers will be heard at the conclusion of today's session. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And we'll begin with our first caller. Caller, you may begin your comments. I'm sorry, it was on mute. Uh, Consuelo. Uh, good morning to my people in the chambers and the audience. Um, yeah, it was uh, amen to Mary and to Mark and to Mike, Michael. And it's just, uh, I just can't believe that he gets that pass. He should be gone. No, not a penny more needs to be given to that family. Anyways, what I wanted to say was, um, you know, I wanted to elaborate on how uh, what my, uh, Rumball was saying, um, just people's, um, oh, gosh, sorry, I haven't had my coffee yet. Uh, people's uh, interaction with 
these, you know, politicians and, and having um, engagement and how this whole thing works. Well, I mean, that's really nice in theory, but it's not supposed to work. And it's the illusion. It's like, you know, when you, when you are voting, you're voting for your oppressors, really. It's not even, I mean, and none of this works. None of it's working. It's all falling apart. Um, perhaps, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get our way. I mean, we will get our way one day. And it's around the corner. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to encourage you all to just leave, uh, don't believe any more of their lies. Stop watching them on the news. They're gonna they're gonna act one way, but in the chambers we know how they really are. Anyways, gosh, I'm still tired from yesterday. Thank you for showing up, guys. Not not you, supervisors. That's all I got. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Paul Henkin, on March 14th, you set an agenda item 23 titled Equity, Expanding Data Access and Training. Quote, when we collect data by zip codes, we can really see where some of the gaps are, unquote. Equity, at least as used here and by pretty much all politicians these days, refers primarily to racial equity. Someone wins. Someone loses. That's what you politicians mean, whether in accounting, race relations, justice, or whatever. But equity really means fairness. And what you are doing is anything but. So what item 23 boils down to, that you are putting out only races or hitting not only race and categories against each other, but now it's down to zip codes, not people, zip codes. So apparently, no matter how badly off you are, if you live in a richer, privileged zip code, your individual information might be buried, and you won't be able to get the help you need until that is a majority is poor, underprivileged, or whatever the criterion of the day is. Another problem with the zip code approach is that a lot of people of color would rather be treated as individuals integrated in one too big community, that is the county, and interact with everyone. So why should we spend our tax dollars and effort training them to do the opposite? I'd like your comment. Was this misspeak? And by the way, do all of us including yourself, a favor, and resign now, Fletcher. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisor, Chair Nora Vargas. My name is Terry Ann Skelly. I'm a parent of three adult sons, and I work on good public health policy in land use and at my county planning groups. Yesterday, I asked for the Board of Supervisor to consider support for an important proposed bill pending in Sacramento, AB 1207, entitled Cannabis Child Handy Protection Act. Parents appreciated your support yesterday for considering Senator Brian Jones's legislation, and I know that they would also for Assemblyperson Jackie, uh, Jackie Irwin's AB 1207. California State PTA and youth advocacy organizations have begun examining new legislation this year regarding marijuana that especially deals with youth protection measures, and AB 1207 is at the top of their list. And we have local data to support one of the reasons for concern. The accidental ingestion of these marijuana-based candy look-alike products that send children to the hospital. At a recent press conference, Rady's Children's Hospital said that children under age 10 testing positive for THC quadrupled since 2016, 
mostly from edibles, of which three quarters were from candy lookalike marijuana candies or gummies. And half of these admissions required hospitalization, and one in ten had to be moved to intensive care. AB 1207 would clarify the regulations and definitions of what is considered attractive to children. Thank you for your support and this opportunity to speak to you on such a significant subject. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Hello, this is Kevin Stevenson again. Uh, I had so much to say yesterday, and of course, uh, we were on a time crunch. But anyways, I just wanted to follow up more on yesterday. I'm glad to see that there is unity in everyone's calls for uh, Nathan Fletcher to resign. It is objectively the right thing to do. He needs to resign immediately. Uh, even if the allegations are false somehow, but I don't see that being the case. Um, but I just want to point out some hypocrisy that I'm hearing, uh, and also just want to debunk a few things. Okay, first off, uh, I forgot to remind people yesterday that uh, BitChute, the website that Mark likes to promote a lot, uh, harbors a lot of white supremacists and neo-Nazis. I am not saying that everyone on that site is one of those things. I'm just saying that a good chunk, if not the outright majority of individuals on that site are on there because they are banned from YouTube. Let's be clear about that. Also, KUSI is not a source that anyone should take with any credibility because they are a right-wing partisan outlet that is looking to smear the likes of Nora Vargas, just putting that out there. Um, also, I find it amusing that uh, Michael is uh, proving me right in what I said about a month ago. He wants the pandemic to continue so he can continue selling his scam garbage. Um, and also, I got them pissed off. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I would, on one hand, like to congratulate Jim Desmond uh, for doing the right thing and calling for Nathan Fletcher to resign. And on the other hand, I would also like to criticize him for having his own history of scummy behavior, whether it's openly bragging about San Marcos not having. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisors, Chair Vargas. I am Mark Wilcox, father, grandfather, and community volunteer. Yesterday, I was pleased to share with you that five cities in the county have established bans on smoking and vaping tobacco and marijuana products in public places. One of the reasons these cities initiated this is to reduce smoking and vaping debris that are deposited onto the ground and make their way to the ocean. However, this comprehensive smoke-free, vape-free outdoor area policy also increases the protections from exposure to secondhand smoke for all of us. Even brief exposure to secondhand smoke and vape, whether tobacco or marijuana, has immediate adverse health in adults and children. The American Cancer Association reminds us that smoking and vaping are still the leading causes of preventable cancer deaths. As a grandfather who has children that live in rental properties, I respectfully remind you that residents who live in multi-unit residences generally have to share these public spaces and walls and ventilation where sleeping and drifting smoke can cause a host of health problems. Now would be the perfect time to protect families with children from exposure to secondhand smoke and vapor where they live. There are 77 municipalities in California that have bans on smoking in multi-unit complexes. Now would be the time for our, our county to join them. Thank you. Thank you. And for the remaining callers that requested to speak on a matter not listed on the agenda, if you could please hang up and call back at the conclusion of the session. Chairwoman Vargas, that concludes the request for non-agenda public communication this morning. 
Thank you, Clerk. Um, just a reminder, please, that the board really wishes to um, move forward with the business that we're conducting today in an orderly fashion. We ask that uh, folks please um, respect the chambers and stop yelling out and doing things that are just inappropriate. You have your time to speak. Uh, we're going to honor that. We respect everybody's points of view. You can say whatever you want for the next the two minutes during non-agenda public comments. But please let us do the business of the communities that we were elected to do, and um, please uh, focus on that, all right? Because that's what we're here to do. We're here to work. So the next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes, statement, and the proceedings for the regular meeting of March 15th and the Sanitation District meeting of March 1st, 2023. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Please vote. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chair Vargas, Chairwoman Vargas, that motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. Thank you. We will now proceed with the formation of our consent calendar. Items one and two members of the public will be able to comment on the consent calendar after the supervisors pull the items they would like for discussion. Supervisor Anderson? None at this time. All right. Supervisor Dutt, would you like to make a motion? I have to make a motion. Okay. Supervisor Desmond? Um, I have no items to pull or any comments on items uh, one and two in the consent, and I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We're going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to public comment. Thank you, Chairwoman Vargas. We have eight total requests <laughs> to speak on items on the consent calendar, four individuals in person, and four requesting to speak by phone. Any members of the public that have requested to speak on items on the consent calendar, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. I'd like to invite forward the following individuals. Oliver Twist, Michael Brando, Mark, and Election Guru. You will have two minutes to address the board. Please begin by stating your name for the record. Oliver Twist here. First, thank you to, your, to you and your staff for their comprehensive work in both gathering and then reporting on this data. What really jumped out at me is the exponential difference between the total miles in urban districts versus the more rural, unincorporated areas. From that chart alone, a prudent person can see the negative impacts and burdens any mileage tax or road usage charge would have on rural re residents, many of whom live below the poverty line. So again, no to any mileage tax or road usage charge that might be lingering on the state mandate table in some manner. Please center yourselves. I would also at this time like to advocate for the county to step up in making a recent project in Alpine Hole. The project is on Marshall Road, up the hill from Marietta's and the Shell Station. The infill and low-income building incentives allowed for a larger complex than what was originally planned, increasing parking burdens and congestion on that road. Currently, there is an awkward transition from the upper portion of Marshall Road to the downhill portion that connects to Alpine Boulevard. I'm not sure what the status of that transition is, but I'm asking the county to step up and properly connect those roads and make them wide and safe um, so that uh, for a thoroughfare. This is essential due to most in Alpine being a high severity fire zone. A county maintained connection will allow for better egress should a fire evacuation ever be ordered. Please check into the status of this and ensure those roads connect in a manner um, that is, ensures public safety. Thank you so much. Michael, let it be known for the record that during a sizable portion of Oliver Twist's speech, which just came before me, Ryan Sharp, Nora Vargas, and Sarah Agassi were chit-chatting up here, completely ignoring Oliver Twist. Again, that's why we need a split camera to keep the eye on all of you while a speaker is talking. 
Also, I would be remiss not to say that in that clip I played earlier, uh, credit goes to a YouTube channel. Yeah, you'll like that, Kevin, a YouTube channel. The Little Shaman, The Little Shaman, it's all about narcissism. Because that's what's going on here, and that's what's going on with this item. And that's what's going on with Miss Nora Vargas and her buddy Nathan Fletcher. She's involved in systemic gaslighting. Systemic gaslighting, systemic lying, systemic blame shifting. And no, they're not doing the business of the county or the people. They're doing the business of their handlers and the profiteers who connect with them. And she's looking like she doesn't understand what I'm saying, but she does. All right, I probably don't have enough time to go through this. I understand this consent calendar item number one has to do with uh, meeting all these requirements for money to change hands and uh, to fund you know, the, the projects that go on here. Um, I'm gonna probably have to save this for another item, but it has to do with the interconnection of all these agencies, including the California Department of Tra uh, Transportation, Caltrans. I'll get to that because it connects with the next agenda item. Again, get out now. And all of you can speak up about this in your private life and with people you know. That includes you, Sarah. Mark, <clears throat> agenda item one, <clears throat> about the roads, and uh, they assess the mileage usage on the roads and uh, to decide, of course, what they're going to do. I won't have time to speak properly on this entire subject, but everyone should see the Rosa Corey video here and these other videos. These are all free on YouTube. One is on BitChute. Um, it's the one, the Michael Yaden one. So, unfortunately, uh, overall, this board has an agenda with the roads to get people out of the rural areas, and they're going to be <clears throat> slowly but surely, and as quickly as will be allowed by the public, they're going to uh, get rid of access in the rural areas because they don't want people living, <clears throat> living in the rural areas. This is an Agenda 21 goal. It is totally against American sovereignty. And it, it is being done. You can see in this video, Rosa Corey is the highest authority on this. She worked for the Department of Transportation as a district manager chief and, uh, uh, excuse me, a district branch chief. And she was also, uh, her expertise is in land use and property valuation. She could go to court and be an expert witness um, on those subjects. So. Anyway, see these videos? Uh, their plan is to get people out of the rural areas. The wildfire certainly <laughs> help with that, I'm sure. And uh, it seems to be quite a coincidence that we have so incredibly many wildfires when they want people out of rural areas. And their insurance goes up. Uh, the elite, by the way, own these insurance companies, and they can't afford to have insurance, so they're losing their property. I actually see them down at the beach, homeless, people that have families and businesses. It's a crime. These people are a crime. Okay, election guru here. Apparently, Michael Vu isn't gonna be here today, so I'm talking to the three of you. Two of you, I believe, were pretty much elected somewhat legitimately. One of you, absolutely not. No, based off of the population and based off of the amount of missing ballots. I will go ahead and inquire the amount of missing ballots for your election, Nora. If you guys do not want to address the missing ballots and how they could be used to change someone else's vote. If you do not want to address the fact that third party individuals have the ability to change and adjust votes, then you're going along with it. And the fact that you guys are not even willing to speak up or ask Michael Vu on front of camera, just a, one simple question, can it happen? I don't care about his opinion because we did not hire him for his opinion on whether or not it happened. 
We hired him for the truth. And I don't care what the Secretary of State says how to run the election. It is your duty to certify it properly. Do you understand that? And if you cannot, based off the unused ballots, you should not certify election. Tell that to the Secretary of State. It is not my duty to convince them that you guys made a mistake based off of Michael Vu's in for the same reason why he resigned his last position. He's most likely a plant or something stupid, or he just is that ignorant of the election process, that he should not have ever been in that kind of position. And then you gave him that, and now you're gonna go ahead and try to promote him to what? I don't understand this. I don't understand this at all. I. Now we will hear from those that requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And we will begin with our first caller. How did you like that, Norm? Hello, Alan C. Uh, just a mic check. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, just to let this board know, you've got the email. You can see it. I have notified news across the nation what's going on today. The world is watching you guys. Let's talk about this uh, road use tax and the conflict of interest. Supervisor Fletcher, his wife, Nora, uh, Nora I'm sorry, uh, get the two mixed up, Lorena Gonzalez, and former state rep 80, passed AB5, forced union, uh, every job in the union. Laura Vargas, I'm, I'm, I keep mixing up, Lorena Gonzalez, wife of Nathan Fletcher, also passed AB 805. Anybody say earning that, 805, freeway 805? Basically forces way to vote at Sandag. And why? To push the mileage tax. Okay, now to Supervisor Nora Vargas. Your turn at the helm. You sit on the San Diego Air Pollution Board. You advise CARB to push legislation to bypass the vote of people for the road usage charge. Don't you have any heart? We have been suffering these last two years. How many businesses have suffered? I mean, I find it so ironic that Nathan Fletcher is on sex harassment charge. is the way to pull him down after everything he has done these last two years to kill jobs, close their churches, close their schools, close their beaches, and you guys have done nothing for the last two years. Very disappointing yesterday's vote, unanimous vote and everything. We have two Democrats and two Republicans on this board can really make a difference to represent all their constituents. Knock off, knock off all the stuff of, of just failing your unions. Oh, yes, and uh, by the way, uh, Lorena Gonzalez is also now the state union rep. On such of interest, anybody? Any, you need to look at what you're doing and start taking care of the people. We've been paying tax on these roads since 1987, transit tax, and now you want to take it away and put it for more bike lanes, more empty buses. What are you going to do when the electric car takes over? Any Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. GM8 depends on the day. It's quite ridiculous that you're sitting here that you guys are talking about. We have work to do. You know what work that you do is you sit here and try and find ways to get money from the people to bypass someone's vote so that you guys can implement things that the people actually don't want. And you sit here and you're talking about, like, maintaining roads. The roads aren't maintained in the unincorporated area. There's a reason for that. You guys don't want them maintained. You don't want people driving. You want to tax more people to do it so that you de-incentivize them. It's very um, absurd that you think that you're doing work when all you're doing, and you don't even want to hear from the people. So, I mean, if you did, then you would make sure that that mileage tax goes by and gets passed by the people. Otherwise, don't sit here and virtue signal like you actually care what people say. And then you want to sit here and deal with parks. That's great and all, but you're trying to buy, build a $10, $11 million campground around a sewer lake. It is BS. You sit here and talking about we want to help people and have them be healthy and give them all these. Nits. But you're doing stuff that's totally nefarious. 
You can't close Pandora's box once you guys open it. And what you're doing is completely still continuing to destroy the county that Nathan Fletcher had his hand in. And then you guys are sitting here. And you know what, Jim? It's quite sad because you're sitting there like, oh, as soon as Nathan leaves, I'm going to bring up that, yeah, he should be gone. But when Nathan's there sitting next to you, you cower away and go into your little shell and don't say anything. You let him dictate stuff over to you. So it's like all of a sudden now you got your balls and you want to just start saying stuff. Well, you should have been doing it the whole time. You guys are totally ridiculous and totally incompetent. None of you are up there that should be. Um, you have not been voted in, so I don't know why anybody thinks any of you have. You're placed in that position for a freaking reason because you're puppets and you're doing the exact job that you're supposed to do. It's not work for the people. It's work for the people that are holding the strings. Thank you. Thank you, your time is up. And just to note for the record, that speaker was Audra, and we will go to our next caller. Nathan's life is a Pandora box, that's the joke. This is truth, and I want everyone to be authentic, honest, take responsibility for your mistakes, and acknowledge the uncomfortable. It's a tall ask, I know. Item two, that's what the county, Department of Parks and Rec, got over $125,000 in donations. Hellhole Canyon got over 1300 bucks in Halloween pumpkins and snacks. And for the public, Hellhole Canyon is not a reference to being in the chambers, even though Nathan the Narcissist's reign of terror was very similar. And item one, the County Department of Public Works pretends to maintain 2,000 miles of public roads in the unincorporated areas in order to get funding from the state's unnecessary gas tax. Those 15 roads were reported to Caltrans and the state controller. Controller, that's right. It's pay to play. You want the people's taxes played by the rules, which makes you supervisors pathetic puppets with no power. It's sad. Well, we the people don't get any fixed roads. Taxation without representation. It's called tyranny. Business as usual. And speaking of business, allow me to wear my business hat or suit now. Hello again, dishonorable supervisors. This is Truth, and I'm calling as a stakeholder representative for Truth Emergency Paving and Concrete Building Services Construction Group. That's Truth, Epic BS for short. We don't really have any expertise in this reclaimed asphalt field, but since DPW is evaluating the use of 100% reclaimed asphalt pavement for steel resurfacing operations, we're willing to figure it out for cash payments at half the cost, just the same as Charlton's $100 a day home building offer. We look forward to partnering with Chair Vargas and the county. Please consider us, and thank you for wasting my time. I will continue to call on this line regardless if any of you have any questions or not. Recycled toxic particles for everyone, that's what I'm saying. So, how's everyone in the chamber? All right, I couldn't be there. I had to sleep. Yesterday was exhausting. Like thank you. Your time is up. And Chairwoman Vargas, that concludes public comment on the items on the consent calendar. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. Thank you. Uh, on item F, County of San Diego uh, Housing Authority, item one, uh, just a reminder to the public that might have missed that earlier remarks for the Housing Authority, we'll be continuing this item on the Housing Authority agenda to a special meeting on April 11, 2023 because of quorum. I know there's some folks who are here that wanted to speak to this item. I invite you, um, if you'd like to uh, make your comments during non-public agenda, comments that way we can you don't have to come back if you don't like to but I just because if we don't have quorum we're not allowed to have you speak at this time so I I, I wanted to make you give you that option if you like um, our next item on the agenda is item number three we'll now proceed with the discussion on the traffic advisory committee and related CEQA exceptions April 5th 2023 adopt recommendations including introducing an ordinance April 19 2023 second reading of an ordinance unless ordinance is modified on the second reading so can you call the speakers for um, public comment thank you chairman Vargas we have seven total requests to speak two individuals in person and five requesting to speak speak by phone I'd also like to note for the record we received three e comments on this item two in favor and one in opposition for any members of the public that have requested to speak on this item by phone please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you we will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the mural, murals until it is your turn to speak. I would like to invite forward the following individuals, Michael Brando and Mark. 
You'll have two minutes to address the board, and if you could please begin by stating your name for the record. Mark, as I said before, <clears throat> the Traffic Advisory Committee <laughs> has an agenda, which is, and by the way, Agenda 21 isn't called that anymore. They keep changing the name. Now it's called Sustainable Development. Uh, it's also deep in the Green New Deal, et cetera. Um, and it's all about taking everyone's sovereign rights. As far as this traffic goes, uh, Audra's right they get funding and they they actually are so corrupt that they made it le oh by the way everyone needs to see these youtube videos i won't have time here um they actually have made it so they can transfer funds to other projects like uh, the rail systems that they want to build and it's not that a rail system would be such a bad idea like for instance china has uh, or japan has except that like china they want to control people's movement and get you out of your cars. It's pretty easy to control a population no matter how much of a dictator and a tyrant you are if you can just flip a switch and flip that rail off. And if you have AI that they already have, looking at millions of e emails and texts and phone calls and assessing them in a millionth of a second, it's easy to see that they could decide, oh, a protest is going to meet here. Well, that rail system doesn't work this afternoon. Uh, these areas that they are, and it can assess all that it's computerized it could easily be done and it is being done to control you to rule over you and make it so you will never be free again they are getting rid of roads in the rural areas <clears throat> they're going to make it so they don't get mail out there that'll really screw them up so people who bought and paid for the property and worked their whole lives will have worthless property and have to move maybe be homeless they're being burned out of their property now. See these videos? They're all on YouTube. Michael, please don't interrupt me because all of these things tied together, believe it or not. Um, Nathan Fletcher, quote, I have a closet no one would see us there. I have a closet. No one would see us there. Now, I bring that up because... Sir, the item before you... Uh, uh, Ma'am, do not... Uh, stop my time. Stop my time. Reclaim my time. You interrupted me, and I see the time still ticking. The blasphemous Nora Vargas really making a mockery of the people that live here on this soil. All right, this number three, yeah, on the surface, it seems fine. It seems fine. But like Mark was just saying, he's referencing all these things. You people never talk about, Jim, 15-minute cities. I don't know if you've heard of that or not. You have this quizzical look on your face like, oh, my God, what is this man talking about? This is just insane. Like, yeah. Yeah, and you're nodding your head up and down. Let it be known for the record that Jim Desmond is nodding his head up and down because he's never heard of 15-minute cities. That's 15. not the agenda. Uh, I, it's related to this, and you're interrupting me too. You people are so full of it. Actually, you know what? I wish Nathan Fletcher was back here. He needs to resign. Needs to resign. <laughs> Nora. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway. He needs to resign. Um, so back on this agenda item, I just want to echo what Mark was saying because 15 minute cities, Jim, I, <laughs> research it. It's tied to the traffic and the transportation and all of this stuff. Goodbye. We will now hear from those who requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And we will begin with our first caller. Good 
Good morning again, Alan C. Uh, question to the traffic committee and all the board members and all the people up in front there. How many took the bus this morning? Oh, so everybody took their cars. Complete irony here. During uh, trying to get the 125 toll removal a few, uh, last year, Democrat Mayor Salas, thank God she actually tried to help the, the working class people to try to remove the toll on 125. Here's what Caltrans and Fox says. I quote, removal 125 toll must meet climate and equity goals, such as reducing greenhouse gases emissions and encouraging use of public transit. Caltrans climate agenda for the toll has no mention of gridlock and accidents freeway. You're placing climate over safety. Del Mar train track. Let me introduce myself. I am the guy that raised hell to get that Del Mar train track off the bluff that's been collapsing since 1940. There's a train that actually fell on the bluff. And yet Hassan Karadik claimed and he got $300 million from uh, Governor Newsom. I'm the guy that pushed that button. And now that money's been pitted away to some silly bridge. Talk about waste. And then Nathan Fletcher, Lorena Gonzalez, how many steak and lobster dinners you have with Hassan Krishana? It's been exposed on the news. You guys are pissing away our money and use it for your bike lanes, bus lanes, and steak and lobster dinners. When is enough enough? Do the right thing. Start representing people because now you've got a great opportunity to do so. This whole thing about using the money for roads is a complete lie when you're actually removing road lanes for more empty buses and bike lanes that one person every three hours might take their bike on that congested road, endangering their life. So stop wasting our money. Start looking what's good for the people because, as I said, electric car takes over. They're going to need roads. Amazon trucks need roads. So get out, stop this nonsense, and look what's actually going to serve the people of this county. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Jim, it depends on the day. I call bullshit, Jim. We have mentioned 15-minute cities in there so many times. We've talked to you about this, and that is what proves that you guys don't pay attention to anything that we say. You think that we are so full of shit that you block us out, all while you're saying, we want to hear what you guys have to say. We love to have input. Blah, blah, blah. Your whole plan for this climate takeover will never work. You guys want us to use public transit like they've all said that nobody uses. You want us to pay tolls on roads that we have already paid for. You want us to get out of our cars. You want us to walk and bike. You understand that the rest of the world has to do the exact same thing if you wanted to make a dent in anything that you claim that you want to fix. So if not everybody's going to participate, all of the efforts that you guys are putting forward to do this kind of bullshit and take everybody's rights, make it so that you can put us under your thumb even more than we are now and make it so that nobody can have anywhere to go or visit their family outside of 15 freaking minute city. You guys have to have the whole world go carbon neutral. It's not going to happen ever. So the more that you guys spend our money, take our rights and do all this stuff, it is never going to be fruitful. Everything that you guys do is like a diamond that people are like, oh my gosh, that looks so pretty. You open it up and it's fucking cold. Everything that you guys do. So don't sit here and virtue signal and gaslight us and act like we're freaking crazy when you guys are the ones pushing an agenda that will never happen. And you're putting climate over the safety of people. They're geoengineering for the next year above San Diego. All right, you guys, you need to pay attention because they are doing stuff. They are spraying above you. And these people don't care because if you cared about the climate, if you cared about people, you would make sure none of that happens. You would make sure the food's safe. You would make sure that you're not giving people sewer water. You would make sure that they have the right to live their life the way they want, not under your thumb, under your rules, all while you're claiming that you're doing this for the people. You represent the people. And right now, none of you represent us. That is your job. So all of Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Give me one second. Sir, yeah. this is your first warning. You've made three different outbursts already. I'm going to ask that you please follow the rules of the chamber. This is your first warning for being disruptive. Thank you. This is truth and all pests and up smash on the windshield to eat my dust in the breeze. 
Here's more recommendations of control using the excuse of safety from the Traffic Advisory Committee. They want the establishment of 45 miles per hour speed limits on Idaho Avenue in Escondido and on Paula Temecula Road in Paula Temecula. How long before both of these are reduced in speed like every other TAC recommendation? Then we have another dangerous always stop sign being put up on 5th Street and Huff Statler Street in Rainbow. Nobody voted for any of these decisions or even for the Traffic Advisory Committee members. Tax members were all handpicked by these supervisors. For example, Joel's choice of Justin Schlafly is the president of Urban Systems Associates, who pushes smart cities, connected vehicles, and intelligent transportation systems master plan. That smart cars and smart roads for stupid people who have their freedom of mobility electronically controlled, as simple as the hit of a kill switch. Last year, CAC wrote a local roadway safety plan that these supervisors approved in order to start slowly implementing connected vehicles and connected intersections. What Jim thinks of as ballet, which will eventually lead to the stupid smart cities that Nora Sandag wants. To paraphrase George Carlin, I only see one team or club here and we ain't in it. It's like 15 minute cities, that's right. Jim doesn't even care that those stupid smart car systems have been tested by AAA and found to kill crash dummies at those speeds. And yesterday, Jim, you went on the news saying Nathan needed to resign immediately. Well, too late. You had plenty of chances to speak up, and you never once stood up for the public speakers against Nathan's tyranny. You're not the good guy, and nobody fooled, as usual. Dummy. And Chairwoman Vargas, that concludes public comment on this item. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? We have a motion and a second. Please vote. I vote. Aye. And Chairwoman Vargas, that motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present and voting aye. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the Sanitation District Agenda. Set a hearing to consider sewer rate adjustments and hold hearing to amend district the ordinance for uh, sewer services provided by the County of San Diego District 1. So this requires the board to conduct a public hearing to receive written prote um, protests from property owners within the district. Um, the staff is here to answer any questions from my colleagues, uh, if we have any. But for now, uh, can you, uh, Clerk, can you please outline the process for the public? and the board, and then we're gonna open up for public comment. So item one on the sanitation district agenda entitled second consideration and adoption of ordinances set a hearing to consider sewer rate adjustments and hold hearing to amend district fee ordinance for sewer services provided by the San Diego County Sanitation District. Adopt pass through ordinance for certain sewer rates and related CEQA exemption requires the board to conduct a public hearing to receive written protests from property owners within the district. Recommendations two and three are four vote items. Staff recommends that the board proceed with recommendation one and conduct the protest hearing today as noticed. Staff also recommends the board continue recommendations two and three to May 3rd, 2023 when four supervisors are available. It'd be appropriate to receive public comment then close the public hearing in order for the written protest to be tabulated. I'd also like to note for the record that all protests must be in writing. One protest may be counted per parcel submitted by the property owner. The board cannot impose the rates if protests are received from majority of the property owners. Depending on the results of the election, the board will be requested to take additional action. And we can go to public comment if we are ready. Yes. Thank you, Chairwoman Vargas. We have nine total requests to speak, Find it five, indi uh, five individuals in person and four requesting to speak by phone. Also like to note for the record, we did receive one e-comment in favor of this item. We also have one individual who registered their position in opposition, but did not wish to address the board. And again, for any members that, of the public that requested to speak on this item by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. But we will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the, mur under the murals until it is your turn to speak. And I'd like to invite forward the following individuals, Steve Peace, Chris Hazel, Joanne Holston, Donna Gibson, and Election Guru. You'll have two minutes to address the board, and if you could please begin by stating your name for the record. Steve Peace. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, I'm not opposed to item one uh, of the thing, but I am opposed to item two. Um, 
and you've got a technical problem in front of you. The Constitution provides three exceptions to the mandatory vote rule. Wastewater is not one of them. Um, there may be a way to craft a legal notice procedure and a legal resolution, but the one before you is not legal. In addition to the constitutional barrier, the, res the, the, the pass-through as crafted doesn't even meet the statutory requirements under 5376C, which require a formula uh, or mechanism. This wouldn't be a gigantic concern, I think, to property owners because of the confines of fees being related to actual services, but for the reality of the pure water program in the city of San Diego, where the city is actively attempting to shift as much of the costs over to the sewer side in its capacity as the wholesaler for the entire area. That, why? Because water rates are nowhere near, are much more visible to the public than sewer rates are. And if they can manage to shift as most to the sewer, then they can push those costs to Chula Vista, to Lemon Grove, to El Cajon, to Escondido, to San Marcos, and minimize what they already know internally to be a three, at least a 300%, 300% increase in water and sewer rates in the city of San Diego, necessary to pay for the only already identified cost in pure water. This project is hopelessly over budget. Uh, it's an engineering challenge of immense circumstances. Some of you may be aware that the city already broke its prior commitment to have a $1 billion cap. They, the pre, your predecessors had negotiated a $1 billion cap for costs that would be visited on Chula Vista, et cetera. And the city already broke that commitment in its negotiations with Padre Dam. So I'm, I'm happy to, in future times, try and work out some of that work. But Thank this, you. Your this time's is up. We'll hear from the next good. speaker. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris. Um, I'm here representing the Remington Hon Condo Complex. Um, uh, we are protesting the increase of the sewage, and here's why. We live in a condo, not a single family home, with no front yard and no backyard. We do not feel that we should pay the same as people who are on a 3,000 plus square footage home, single family across the street from us. We only have 605 square feet to 1,248 square feet and no front yard and no backyard. Why is our building being charged the same? We have eight to nine units in, on each building. That means eight units are getting $4,373 per building, or if we have nine units, you're getting $4,920 per building. We have 27 buildings total on property. If there were single family homes built on the property, Remington Condo Complex, maybe you could put two or three homes in place. If that was true, you would get $1,092 or $6,038 on property uh, in place of our condos. Uh, we appreciate the time you are taking to address our concerns and we'd like to ask a couple questions. Why are single family homes and multifamily homes charged the same? This makes no sense. Who can we talk to or write to to get the charging changed or corrected for this? Um, we only have mostly retired people and low-income families, which means during half of the day, most people are either at school or at work. How much sewage do you think we're actually using? Um, and. Uh, uh, as you can see, we turned in about 50 signed, written uh, protests. So, thank you. Election guru here again. Let me explain why I believe that all this has to do with the elections. If you were brought in here under false pretenses, and you are making choices changing San Diego. So can you just focus every the single item? Every single item, then I, issue, every single item here should be thrown out because you, if you refuse to address the fact that third party individuals can change and adjust votes, and you have a high population of unused ballots uncounted for, and you refuse to, to address that, 
you, you're, you're accepting the fact that that is possibly how you got elected. And based off of your decisions, you're basing every decision you make off of your constituents, not the people in this room. And I have a major, major issue with that, so that if you make a decision based off of your constituents and not based off of the people working underneath you, then there is a major issue with that. Do you understand that? You can please focus on the sanitation issue. I am, absolutely. happy to hear from you on that item. You aren't. I've been asking about it for years. We'll hear from our next speaker. I don't think I was up there to speak, but since you called me anyway, I'm going <laughs> to. I just wanted to add some too. I'm also from the Remington. And this year, by the amount of units that we have and what we paid for this year. I apologize to interrupt you. What's your name? Joanne Holstein. Thank you. Over 214 units times our fee for this year, we paid. $110,000 plus just for this one year of sewer surveys. And also I looked at the amount of people that they serve and just took the average that they charged for us. And they're making like just this year alone $20 million from sewer charges. That seems like a pretty high budget to me. And I kind of feel like it could be handled continuing for the next five years with 20 million a year, which comes out to 100 million in five years. And that would be continued on and not in Fadam because it never comes back off of our taxes. So to tack five more years on after we've just had five years of tax on, I don't think it's fair. And I think there could be a more equitable way to divide how we pay our sewer taxes because I'm a senior citizen, I live alone. We don't have, we don't use that much, people my age anyway. I understand there's you know families that do, but I just wanted to state that I think that the amount of money that they're collecting, particularly for condo communities or mobile home, mobile home, mobile home units and um, the other places that are charged the same as a single family housing, just doesn't seem fair to me. Thank you so much for listening to me. Next speaker. Recalling Chris Hazel and Donna Gibson. Okay. We will now hear from those that requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be unmuted and you'll hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers again, they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And we will begin with our first caller. Hello, Alan C. Uh, yeah, just suggesting and thank you to the, to the clerk. Uh, when we call in, please just leave us on even when we're done speaking. That way we can continue to listen to the comments since the video fee is like 20 seconds delay. So anyways, concerning this uh, sewage rate increase, yeah, it is unfair to, especially in light of what's happened these last few years. I attend the uh, Utilities Commission for various utility rates that also got increased. The reason why you're the sewer rates they want to go up is because so in order to operate all the pumps and that equipment is because electricity rates went up. And the reason why electricity rates went up, stg and is basically a power broker. They import the power from natural gas power plants in Arizona. President Biden last January put $6.5 billion tax on the natural gas suppliers, who in turn you and I pay for. That is why your electric bill went up 300% last January. So, no, you, you basically have to start fighting back for the people. And I say, why are you want to raise the sewer rates? Go back to the source. It's all a tax, tax, tax. And it's, it's so wrong. It's so wrong, just like the road use charge and everything else. Why, why, would you, why are you so heartless? Why are you doing this to people? And to say, uh, let's uh, put less sewage rate for lower income, well, I can understand that. But the problem is when you do that, somebody else has to foot the bill. Who decided me as a middle-class uh, customer have to pay more because someone who makes less pays less? Because in all eco in basic economics, we're all going to end up paying more when you start cutting away and giving out these little dividends to certain people. And, yes, we don't want – you basically want everybody to pay less. 
to look at the source of what you're doing and start fighting for the people. Because, and oh, by the way, community power is government power. People look into it. You can actually opt out. You're right now paying for community power controlled by the government. Think of Venezuela. If you want to opt out, you've got to look into it and opt out. Everybody listening. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Truth. Yesterday I talked about these supervisors drowning in overflowing money buckets. But it seems like Narcissus Nathan's crap has actually made everything flow straight to the sewer. The county sanitation district is looking to increase the sewer rate for customers in the unincorporated areas of Alpine, Campo, East Otay Mesa, Lakeside, Pine Valley, Spring Valley, and Winter Garden. The director of public works, Derek Gay, provides oversight for the district. But it's these supervisors who serve as the district's board of directors. That's why sewer fees have already gone up 9% each year for five years. That means fees have already increased by 45%. But it's never enough. Now these supervisors will vote to increase sewer fees by 5% to 10.25% every year. That's millions of dollars, people. And they claim they want to protect health and water quality. Yet these supervisors and Helen have promoted recycled sewage wastewater sludge for East County residents to drink. Of course, that's a pilot test until they can get everyone to go along with it in the future. But I say now that World Economic Forum member Nathan is gone, or at least needs to be, these taxes on life can go too. And last, Nora, I want to tell you something seriously that I realized last night, and I mean this sincerely. I realized that Nathan used you. His screw-ups are the real reason why he stepped down his chair and nominated you. He knew it was coming. He played everyone, especially women. That's the type of scumbag he is. And that's just another reason why you need to denounce him. But let me tell you, if you had any idea of the time and energy and loss of money I put into what I say here, you wouldn't dare ever cut my time. And if you ever do that again, I will start bringing more people to these meetings, and you'll be here all day in the future. Have respect. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. GMA depends on the day. Love that you guys always talk about wanting to make things better for people, all while you just continue to up taxes and raise the prices on any and everything you can get your hands on um, and claim that it's, you know, to help protect health and well-being. Um, just the fact that you guys continue to raise these um, and also, you know, give people the sewer water back to them, I suggest that all these homeowners protest uh, because if enough do it, they're not going to be able to pass this. But what is interesting is that you want to, um, you're recommending that the sewer capacity fee be collected prior to issuing permits. That's interesting. Um, and also um, that you want to, this will reduce administrative costs associated with potential increase to wholesale charges for wastewater treatment from the city of San Diego for the use of the metropolitan wastewater system, which is set independently by the city. How cool is that? So you guys actually have control, right? You and the city have control to actually not do this to the people, not make them go into poverty, not make sure that, you know, every piece of their life is destroyed. But that is your guys' plan. So you know what? You're doing exactly what your job is because uh, all of this is connected, right? And everything that you do is making it so that you guys are going to put people into a place where they have nowhere to go. And that's why the people need to freaking wake the frick up and start paying attention. Because until you start saying no, they basically think that you consent to upping the price, upping the price, upping the price until you have no money left. And then you know what? You get to depend on them because they're here to help you, you guys. They're here to help. So as long as you let them continue to destroy stuff, They'll be here to pick up the pieces and make sure that you can't ever get outside of a 15-minute zone. So wake up and quit letting them do this, you guys. 
Thank you. Your time is up. And Chairwoman Vargas, that concludes public comment on this item, and it would be appropriate to close the public hearing at this time. Thank you very much. Uh, this closes the public hearing uh, to amend the district fee ordinance for sewer service prices by the San Diego County Sanitation District. Um, can staff go ahead and uh, process the tabulation? Thank you, Chairwoman Vargas. We have concluded the tabulation of written protests received. There were 117 valid written protests received. Since there was not a majority protest, it would be appropriate to entertain a motion to continue recommendations <laughs> two and three to the meeting of May 3rd, 2023, at which time the board will consider adopting recommendations two and three. Okay. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. I thought you were, I thought you were seconding it. No, I'm just trying to make it <laughs> super clean here. So yeah. we have a motion and a second. And this uh, is only on item one, just conducting the hearing. I just want to be clear. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No. And so uh, we have a motion and a second to complete. Please vote. I vote. I vote. All right. Chairwoman Vargas, that motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. All right, there's no further action required on the, uh, of the board at this time. We are now gonna go ahead and move over to non agenda public comment to hear the remainder of the public speakers. So I'll turn it over to our clerk. Thank you, Chairwoman Vargas. We still have 14 requests to speak on matters not listed on the agenda, two in person and 12 coming via phone. For those that requested to speak via phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. You will then have two minutes to address the board and I'd like to invite forward the following individuals. Saib Sabir and Maria Duran. Good morning, my name is Saib Sabir. I applied about 10 years ago for the Section 8 and I never heard my uh, answer, and I had to go to uh, Juan Vargas, the congressman, and I went to Susan Davis to ask her for help. They write the letter to, uh, to the county. They told me we're gonna get answer as soon as possible. I never had any answer from nobody. And I've been disabled. I had six heart surgery, back surgery, uh, hernia, I just had an operation, my hernia. And I was working with United Nations, 1990. I was in the front line fighting for our country. Uh, and I'm asking you guys to help me out to get a Section 8, and I make only $1,100 a month. I cannot live off of $1,100 and pay $600 rent. So please, I'm just asking you guys to help me out. It's okay. been 10, year, 10 years I'm waiting for Section 8. Okay. I'm going to have uh, Nick Martinez is here from our county staff, and they're going to connect with you right now and see where. I already we'll talked to Nick and David, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll so follow up with them, sir. I appreciate you guys to help me out. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. And recalling Maria. not seeing Maria in the chambers. We'll go to uh, those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. Again, I'd like to remind the callers that they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And we'll begin with our first caller. I don't see. Chair Vargas, the gentleman that just spoke, well, he was there yesterday. He actually talked to me, well, what's the process? 
And because you guys did your closed hearing and then held off the remaining public non-agenda item speakers, you got discouraged and left yesterday. To show again how heartless you guys are, and that that was so terrible to do that to that gentleman. And he actually came today, so hopefully you'll take care of him. Started looking at not only him, but the rest of the people of this community. Okay, let's talk about uh, Nathan Fletcher, Dolan Valor, and PTSD. Are you kidding me? I'm retired military, and yet this guy is using that to avoid sexual harassment charges. And like I said, I've already told all the news. They said, got a copy the email. They're watching what's going on here today. So uh, please do not appoint anybody. If you have to appoint someone in the interim, okay, fine for a few months. But the people in that good people in that district need to vote a replacement for uh, Supervisor Fletcher because he's claiming May 15th he will not step down until the taxpayers pay all his legal bills. You already know that. But is that right? Is it right for him to still draw a salary? The salary he's drawing right now, that should be going towards the legal fees, not the taxpayers paying for that crap. Uh, as I mentioned, his wife has put forth numerous m multiple tax capabilities, such as the modest tax, when she was rep of District 80. And now she's a lead of unions throughout the state. No conflict of interest here, folks. That is so horrible to do that to the people. And Sheriff Vargas, as I mentioned earlier, you sit on the Air Resource Board of San Diego. You've got, got direct comms to the CARB and trying to sneak this legislation around the, all the people. That mileage tax is probably one of the worst things concept to come up with. And as I mentioned, Sheriff Vargas, you can do the right thing. You've got the direct comms to the California Air Resources Board. And as I mentioned earlier, Caltrans, they don't care about safety. They're actually pushing to equity, force people to take the... Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Good morning. This is Peggy Walker, public health advocate. While the county spends millions of taxpayer dollars to address mental health and well-being, I want to call attention to one critical element persistently overlooked and that is marijuana commercialization strong link to mounting addiction and negative mental health outcomes. Families that deal with substance abuse and addiction, whether it's marijuana, alcohol, or other drugs, know that it impacts not just the individual, but the entire family, friends, and associates, and can be far-reaching. If the individual is a public figure, as we see, Substance abuse can impact hundreds of thousands of constituents. Mounting evidence of the link of marijuana specifically to addiction and mental health issues has not evaded the media. The Daily Wire, for one, among many, just published a systematic review of studies linking addiction, psychosis, and schizophrenia to marijuana consumption. The Scientific American reported 10 studies finding significant risks of young cannabis users developing psychosis. King's College London found nearly one of four cases of schizophrenia involved marijuana. That's just a very brief list of the scientific research. Yesterday, you voted on a marijuana tax, bringing rural areas closer to invasive businesses that deal in just one thing, the sale of highly potent, addictive THC products known to cause mental health issues. I urge you, supervisors, to follow the science. It's hypocritical and damaging to spend millions on mental health wellness while forcing widespread marijuana business dealing, marijuana businesses that deal in addiction. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Catherine Red. First, I want to thank you so much for helping that gentleman get Section 8 housing. I spoke with him yesterday, and he um, really needs help. Thank you so much. So since 2020, for three years of COVID, we at Housing for the Homeless, including Amy Zamudio and Joanne Stanley, have been trying to get county staff to allow us to turn in our homeless hotel room receipts and paperwork so we could get 100% FEMA reimbursement through the federal and state project home 
project room key homeless hotel room housing programs for COVID-19. Amy and Joanne have over $100,000 in hotel room receipts that we have not been allowed to submit for 100% FEMA reimbursement. The reason is because county emergency staff has stated they need a verbal or written request from one county supervisor, just one, before they will allow us to turn in our homeless hotel room receipts to FEMA. We were counting on Nathan Fletcher, but we can't count on him anymore. We're also counting on our supervisor, Chair Lawson Reamer, where the um, hotel room is located and we can't get help there either. So I'm asking again, our supervisor, Chair Lawson Reamer, our supervisor Anderson, our supervisor Vargas, or supervisor Desmond, please just um, have our issue be put forward to your um, county administration officer and county staff and just give them an email saying, hey, let them turn in the receipt. There's nothing to lose. There's everything to gain. Um, Amy has been doing GoFundMe um, to get these private hotel rooms. A lot of them are for black seniors. And people who have donated to her cause include Congresswoman Farrah Jacobs and City of San Diego Council Member Joe Saba. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Good morning, board. My name is Kathleen Lippett. As a public health practitioner, advocate, and supporter of public policies, I have supported communities and parents trying to keep their children away from drugs and parents. Sadly, the population of grieving parents whose children have been permanently harmed or died from addiction or overdose continues to grow. Efforts turn from supporting the victims of drug dealing to supporting the victimizers then framing those efforts as laudable under the guise of equity. This board failed to acknowledge the unintended consequences and evidence of harm or even do a cursory cost-benefit analysis prior to adopting their unprecedented marijuana ordinance. The ordinance gifted the industry with unprecedented access and authorization, as well as superseded the consent of unincorporated residents and oversight. The results could not have been more predictable. The state is finally recognizing its duty to root out bribery, conflicts of interest, rampant and widespread industry corruption, pay-to-play schemes, and political payoffs, but only after allowing its deep tentacles to grow into local and state governments. This industry previously defied federal, state, and local laws against selling drugs for profit, and its past behaviors were the best predictor of future behaviors. Absurdly, more liberal regulations are being proposed as a solution when that was the genesis of this shameful debacle to begin with. Unincorporated communities need basic safety improvements, increased youth programs, community rec centers, drug-free parks, and cleanup, street lights and paved streets, not more pot-ups. It's time to serve your constituents and not the for-profit drug industry. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. And we'll go to our next caller. <coughs> GNA depends on the day. Reclamos Latina, pero eres Tijuanera. Nora, you're capri capriciously changing the time yesterday to one minute when not that many people were in attendance is completely ridiculous and in the lines of Nathan Fletcher. And the fact that you want to emulate that man is a shame because he is incompetent, which means that every decision that he has made or everything that has supposedly happened to him needs to be looked at like the fire that is Probably, who knows, was it at his own hands so that he could conveniently go have this little affair in a hotel with a woman and up his security that the people did not consent to having, all while he says that the people are a threat? When he's the one sticking the officers on the people, having me beaten out in the hall and asking me if I want it to happen again at the following meeting. That is completely ridiculous. And the fact that you guys, Jim, you won't even stand behind your own constituents. You guys sit up there and act like you want to help the people or whatever, but you let this man destroy the county all while you guys sit there 
and your accomplices in it because you're acquiescing to all of the decisions that he's made, even sticking the people, the, the police on the people and changing the dynamic of these meetings and making the police the threat against the people, which is not their job. They're supposed to be protecting the people, not assaulting them. And none of you guys have done anything that is in the lines of protection of the people. And I don't care if it costs four million dollars. The people need to have a say. You guys are not competent enough to make a decision that will affect this entire county. And Nathan needs to donate that million dollars that he had. In fact, he needs to give back that two million dollars that was spent on his security. That is totally bogus. When the people were the ones that needed the protection against him. And if you continue to emulate them, then you too will. We will need protection against you, which we already do. But it's very sad. You guys need to start representing the people, and this starts with right now and these decisions made about me. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Good morning, supervisors. My name is Becky Rapp. I'm a parent. Concern for the safety of our children as high potency marijuana is being advertised and commercialized to look appealing to young children. I appreciate the previous speaker who so clearly spoke to the connection of high potency THC products and mental health. Recently, eight children, some as young as 12, were treated after consuming marijuana gummies at school. The children ages 12 to 16 fell ill and several had to be taken to the hospital. Sadly, this story is becoming more and more common. Assemblymember Irwin recognizes this problem and has authored the Cannabis Candy Child Protection Act, AB 1207. In the bill, we have been reminded of the promises of Prop 64 when it stated, marijuana products should not be designed to be appealing to children or easily confused with commercially sold candy or foods that do not, uh, that contain marijuana. Child exposure to and consumption of marijuana is neither necessary nor acceptable. Our children, youth, parents, and schools cannot afford the continued proliferation of marijuana products attractive to children. I bring this to your attention as you are considering moving forward with an elaborate expansion of marijuana in our county. The state recognizes we have significant problems with current regulations and is working to improve them for the safety and welfare of our children. I would ask you to slow down with any expansion and formally support bills such as AB 1207, making a statement that you recognize the damaging effects of high potency THC and other marijuana products. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to our next caller. This is truth, and I'm born to make cracks in their see-through glass of lies. So I wanted to clarify some things about my poem that I read on March 15th. Number one, I reserve all commercial rights. Number two, the word wet had no sexual meaning. It was about water. And three, I'd much rather be writing more artistic pieces than creative writing for BOS garbage agendas any day. Now on March 25th, you supervisors got real lucky I didn't hear that meeting until the next morning. Or maybe you got unlucky, but you know I want to brought some fun. And April 3rd, Public Health Champions Award Ceremony was a facade of fools patting themselves on the back. It was presented by Wicked Wilma Wonka of the West, who dishonored the Kumeyaay and all Native peoples by pushing the toxic COVID clot shop, which goes against Native natural medicine. She also told people to donate culturally appropriate canned foods. Good luck. Trans family got an award for pushing the money pox scam onto the LGBTQ community. And Mayor Todd, the homeless sweeper, got an award. He was right, though, when he called the county a game. COVID propagandist Paul Seesom got an award for convincing people of the county's misinformation. I did laugh at Jennifer Coons' diversion, equity and inclusion flub. Go ahead and divert the racist equity and inclusion agenda. 3D Nick Machio. As far as life expectancy, I've come to expect you to ruin life here in the county. That's why you got a NACO award after all. And then the taxpayers 
footed the bill for wannabe blue blood county minions to get see-through like glass awards, shallow paper certificates, and more gluttonous catering in room 302. The awards meant nothing, and you all earned nothing. But Consuelo, I disagree about Nora. I think she doesn't know anything at all, and you too much. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning, Board of Supervisors and Riddle here. I came as a parent, grandparent, lifelong San Diego County resident, and a person who's volunteered for youth programs all of her life. Most, com most currently, I've been volunteering in an after-school program for elementary school students identified by their teacher as needing a listening ear, some extra attention due to the possibility of future mental health issues. So I was very moved when Radies Children's Hospital put out a press release regarding the increase in intake in mental health problems with their patients. They said, in the past five years, the number of mental health psychiatric visits to Radies has gone from 250 per year to 250 per month. I think it's terribly important here at the county that we put the protection of children and their mental health first. And one of the good ways we could do it is to put on the shelf all movement towards expanding marijuana businesses in the unincorporated area of the county. But none of the county planning groups have ever asked for it. There is not a need for more marijuana in the unincorporated areas. The cascading amount of data that's been coming our way regarding physical and mental health problems associated with marijuana use by those under the age of 25 is just staggering. We really need to stop using our resources and our money to expand marijuana businesses. Remember, this is a for-profit business. The county doesn't need to enable it. We do not need more marijuana businesses in the unincorporated area. Our first investment needs to be in our most vulnerable children, and marijuana businesses only corrupt their profit. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. Hi, good morning, Board of Supervisors. This is KB Strange here. I'm a pharmacist practicing in the unincorporated areas of the county. I've spoken in the past about bringing more marijuana businesses to the backcountry, which I feel is extremely unwise. The repercussions of marijuana businesses is that marijuana use obscures the many physical and mental mental health problems associated with its use. I'm bringing some Im important health information to you today that I received from the University of California, San Francisco Tobacco Center at a symposium called It's About a Billion Lies. Researchers at this symposium reported on the debilitating effect of inhaled tobacco and marijuana products. This inhaling Inhaling of tobacco or cannabis smoke and vapor is a predictor of heart disease. We've known for a long time that smoking and secondhand tobacco smoking compromises the cardiovascular system. Now, more recent research has shown similar effects from cannabis smoke and vapor. Tobacco and marijuana smoking and vaping is an extraordinarily costly situation for individuals and families and undermines the county's strong with, live well focus. Thank you. Thank you. And Chairwoman Vargas, that concludes the request for non-agenda public communication this morning. <coughs> Thank you. That concludes this meeting. And with that meeting, this, that, this meeting is adjourned. We're going to take a five-minute recess so that we can get organized for our next special meeting. So um, stay tuned.
from CAO to be. Also, I want to touch on briefly, uh, highlight the disenfranchisement that I witnessed today, and it routine, routinely happens in this chamber. And by that, it was glaringly evidenced by Mr. Saeed having to return today. Can you hold on one second? Yes, there's thank you. Something happening with the med uh, media, and I just want to make sure that people hear your comments. So go, okay, give me you. one minute, okay? Try to figure okay, it out. It's on. It's on. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I also do want to touch on the disenfranchisement that we witnessed today and that routinely happens in this chamber. It was glaringly evidenced by Mr. Saeed having to return today to petition you for help. Your non-agenda policy of limiting us to five in people while we fight and jockey to be first, otherwise having to wait hours to be heard, disenfranchises and um, discourages from people returning, particularly after yesterday with that hour to hour and a half wait. Um, um, so I'm asking you to please reconsider and put more non-agenda people at the meeting so he's not having to make two trips down here. Um, lastly, I also was surprised yesterday by the me lack of media presence, and I want them to hold you to greater account. Cameras are the greatest forms of sunshine. Their mere presence is a powerful force of accountability to keep people honest. Also, please bring back clapping. Thank you. Next speaker. Well, since it's closed session, I know any topic is available, but here's the deal. I'm expecting you, Nora, since you're the chair, since you're the one in charge, to go ahead and ask Michael Vu the next time he's here in front of everyone, what is stopping third party individuals from changing and adjusting votes? I do not want to hear his opinion. We, as I clarified earlier, we did not hire him for his opinion. You know that, I know that. We all know the fact that every ballot is unidentifiable. And to pretend you don't know that is bullshit. You know that, and I know that. So if you don't do anything about it, you know you were elected illegitimately. There is, there is a fact. I know that Jim is interested in this. So I believe that he believes that he was elected legitimately. I'm not totally sure about Joel. But you, on the other hand, you want to go ahead and ignore this issue. You want to go ahead, and, and I'm not really talking to you. I'm talking to the camera. I'm talking to the people that will be watching this video. Not right now, not today, not tomorrow. It's going to be when people don't, when someone wins that should not have won, and that they won illegitimately, and then we're going to address this topic. And when this topic gets addressed, and the fact that you were ignoring it this entire time, have fun with that. Thank you. And we will now hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be unmuted, and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. Again, I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking, and we'll begin with our first caller. Excuse me, Madra. So you guys keep messing with your feed and all this. It's like you want to do everything so that you can't hear from the people. Like closing the meeting yesterday between closed session and non-agenda is really ridiculous. You guys have obviously got anticipated litigation with all of Nathan's escapades and shenanigans. And, you know, this whole time he's claimed that the people are misinformation. Well, the problem is if you guys could down the path that he has led you down um, with the emergencies, all the things with the vaccines, the elections, not listening to the people, you will be facing more litigation from the people because so many people have been affected by this and you guys need to be held accountable. And if you continue, like I said, down that path, then you will be. It won't be just Nathan. Um, but it, it's quite ridiculous that none of you are, are standing with the people. Um, you're kind of, you know, denouncing it a little bit here and there, but you're not you're not fully standing with the people. That would show that you are on the side of the people if you guys denounce Nathan and and uh, in 
tell him that he needs to resign immediately. Um, otherwise, you know, the people are never going to trust you like they already don't. You can tell Nora that he was your strength, which is super weird because, you know, like Trusa, he was using you. He's been using all of you, and especially you and Jim, Joel, and Joel. You know, uh, you guys have been sitting there acquiescing to everything, letting him roll over you like a steamroller. Like I said, Jim, all of a sudden you got your balls back now that he's gone. It's pretty sad because you guys should have had it the whole time to stand up for the people. And so if you don't turn your back on all the things that you've been doing and repudiate and repent <clears throat> because people have been, their lives have been destroyed, then you two will be facing litigation and it's inevitable. So I suggest that you um, really think about that and uh, let it weigh heavy upon your hearts and pray to God if you even believe in him, not the God. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to our next caller. It's time to become brave again. Take all the risk with all the liberties. A true American can expect no less. It's true. Nora, I watched your video, the county employees that was uploaded unlisted onto YouTube that they found annoyingly political and incredibly neutral rather than like a leader addressing Nathan's mistakes and lies. The staff will continue to carry out the work and with your input, our board will determine the best direction. If you have any questions or concerns about anything that's going on in our county, you are always welcome to reach out. Questions okay from employees, but not the public, huh? Well, that's not very equitable, Nora. But everyone can watch Nora's video on my new Instagram at truth underscore T-O-N-I-S. Call it a shameless plug if you want. But I do welcome haters because you're fuel to my speaking fire, and you also make me laugh. This is all related to anticipated litigation. This meddling writer, he's no mystery here, though. Here's part of Helen's email she sent to county employees, quote, County team, many of you have heard that a civil lawsuit naming Supervisor Fletcher as a defendant has been filed in San Diego Superior Court, end quote. This closed session seems to be about the allegations of sexual harassment, sexual assault, failure to prevent sexual harassment, and whistleblower retaliation. Nathan's dirty deeds, but they won't come cheap with this and other impending lawsuits. Nathan must hold a record for the most damage done to a county in the shortest amount of time. He's a wiener, I mean a winner, at being a loser. My parting message to everyone is, it's up to every single American out there to speak up and save this country wherever they live and wherever they can. It's time to become brave again. Thank you. Your time is up. And Chairwoman Vargas, that concludes public comment on this item. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes this meeting. We will now adjourn to closed session. The board will now recess, in, uh, recess into closed session to consider those matters listed under item one on today's agenda. If there are any reportable actions, they will be reported out after the conclusion of closed session today.